They restore damage from fires, floods, windstorms, and some things you can't even imagine. We'll do everything from somebody dies, senior person, somebody has a heart attack, they're living alone, and, and they're there for a week, two weeks, a month. Uh, it, it's not a very pretty situation. Uh, suicides, we deal with cleaning up uh, meth labs and grow ops and heck, uh, last fall it, it, an airplane crashed into a building and we had to extract an airplane out of the side of an apartment building and clean up the fuel and so on. Founded in 1979 by Craig Hogarth, on-site restoration is now centralized in a 50,000 square foot facility in Vancouver, BC. It is described as a full-service, one-stop shop for restoration services. Mike Sully takes ILS TV on a behind-the-scenes look. So this is our operations center. In this area, we've got our various dispatchers for water damage, construction, contents, and remediation. And we have our operations staff who take notes and put them on files for our projects. So what we are doing now is we're introducing GPS tracking to our vehicles and we know when it interlinks with our dispatch system so if somebody's supposed to be at an appointment at a given time it will send us an alarm saying that they were or weren't there. Uh, it's just a way of making sure that we stay on top of our customer service needs. Our contents areas are completely secure. The only people that are allowed in contents actually are contents people. Clients' uh, products are being well taken care of. So what's happening here is we're, we're cleaning some products that came out of a fire and we're using a chemical sponge to wipe off any soot residue on the product. That way we'll eliminate the odors. These products subsequently, depending on whether it's required, may be ozone. They'll put in an ozone chamber, it's exposed to ozone to again further reduce any residual odors. This is an ozone chamber. It's also a drying chamber. We'll use it for drying products out because it's hooked up to a desiccant drying machine or hooked up to an ozone generator. Uh, items that have been through a fire, they've been clean and if there's still a, a slight residual odor, we will put them into the ozone, gen ozone chamber, leave them there overnight. When they come out, the ozone will actually go about eating or attacking the, the odor generating bacteria and so on and what happens is you get a product now that it is very fresh smelling after the fact. We do a lot of things, but one of the things we do do is, you know, if, if you have major water damage or smoke damage, in a lot of cases your mattings or your framework is damaged. So what we'll do is, while well, the client's in looking at how well we've cleaned their product, we'll give them the option to take a look at their, their frames and mattings. So they come in and in this area, what we'll do is we'll show them what their options are and we'll actually reframe and remat all their artwork. So in this area, lots of times there'll be damage is done to either uh, a, a carpets or upholstery. Chris, our technician, will, in this case he's cleaning, looks like a futon or a mat. We'll clean the uh, Persian rugs on the floor. We have hanging towers to bring, drag them up and hang them. Forced air, and we also have heat and dehumidification. So we can take a very heavy Persian rug, we can clean it and dry it in 24 hours. Now that we've cleaned your product and we need to we need need to put the client's product somewhere, we have to have storage and this is where we do it, whether it be your area rugs that are going to be stored or the contents from your home. We bin them and stack them. Eh, a reasonable uh, a bungalow might be three or four bins worth of storage. And as you can see here, I believe in the warehouse we have 150 bins. So there's the equivalent of uh, between 30 and 50 homes worth of a product here for storage. And it may be here from anywhere from three to six months. We have injector dry systems, uh, rescue mats, those will be put on hardwood floors. If there's water underneath, we'll suck air through that to help dry the, dry the hardwood floor out without losing it. There's lots of times you'll go and your hardwood floor will be cupped when it's wet. But in actual fact, over a week or two, we can dry it down and it'll return. On-site deals with many hazardous materials such as asbestos. It takes a well-trained staff and some pretty sophisticated equipment. You'll notice that the earth covers are all taped off on the ends. What that is, we've been using those in an asbestos site. And when we take them off site, we have to make sure that they're, the asbestos isn't leaking out so that all the, all the apertures are taped up. Because this machine has to be regularly tested and stickered that it is sealed. There's no leaks anywhere that none of these materials can get out and get into the air. So in this area, this is our asbestos lab. This is where we test any materials that we're going to be removing from a building to find out if they contain asbestos. 
we take the sample, we examine it under a microscope, we do something that's called a 400 point count. There's a number of ways of doing this, but with drywall we do a 400 point count. It's very accurate, gets it down to about a quarter of a percent. So we can make sure that we understand completely what percentage of asbestos we're dealing with and we can adjust the process accordingly. The higher the percentage, the higher the level of uh, uh, the sophistication of the process we're going to use to ensure that our workers aren't exposed to, to asbestos and also that the public or the residents of the home aren't exposed. You wouldn't believe the number of letters we get from people that just are so thankful for what we did and how we did it and how we treated them and you know how we saved their, their, their belongings. Uh, it's not always that way, but I would suggest to you that you know 90% of the time they are just so grateful for what we've done. Uh, hey, you know, we all have problem files occasionally we have to deal with, you know. But uh, that's that's actually what makes us better. It's how we deal with the problem files and, and resolve them that, that's really important.